Let's try a graphical approach to applications of quadratic functions, quadratic functions and equations lesson number eight. Now we're going to use our graphing calculator to try and find some characteristics about the quadratic function and especially we're going to try and find the maximum or minimum values and here's a procedure that we can go through that can help us find these values. So you could enter the equation in the function into y1 or y2 or y3 but generally if you're just looking for one we might as well just put it into y1 and then we can press graph. Now of course we're going to we have the equation hopefully and we put into y1 equals and it's going to be ax squared plus bx plus c or another form that is easy enough to graph. Then we're going to try and find the calculation feature on the calculator. Now we're going to try that find that by pressing second trace. We'll select minimum or maximum in that menu and then on the bottom left hand side of the screen the calculator might ask for a left boundary and so we're going to select a, a value on the left side of the max or minimum point and then we press enter. Then on the bo bottom left hand side of the calculator it's going to ask for a right boundary or right bound and we're going to select a value on the right side of the max and min. Kind of like goalposts so that the calculator knows where to look for this max or min value. So you press enter after you put it to the right of that max or min and then on the bottom left hand side it'll say uh, guess and you're going to just press enter at as you put the cursor maybe close to where that max or min value and it'll show you the x value and it'll also show you the y value that will be the max or min answer. So let's take a look at example one and see if we can use that to find the max or min value. So we're going to use a graph calculator to answer some of these following questions. We have this height h in meters above the ground of a projectile at any time t in seconds after the initial launch as defined by this function, h of t, which is the height, is equal to negative 4t squared plus 48t plus 3. And t is the time in seconds. And h is the height of the projectile after it's launched. So let's sketch the re relevant part of the parabola on the grid. Well, we might not know what it is. We could set up a table of values and try and find that. But we're going to use our technology to see if we can do it. So here we go. So here's my graphing calculator. Maybe we'll try and zoom in on that here. Let's make our y equals. We said that the the equation was going to be negative 4t squared. Now we're going to use this x, x value here and I'm going to just zoom out so that we can see what's happening. So here we're going to use this xt theta n button here. This is our x button. So x squared then it's going to be plus 48x and then plus 3. Plus 3, there it is. Okay, so now that we have that, we're going to press this graph button. Here we go, graph. And hopefully it shows up. Oh, that didn't look very good. So let's just try and, and change our window settings. So here is our window. Let's press window and we can change our settings. Um, let's see if we can use something like this. We'll say, since it starts at zero, uh, zero time, let's just go minus two, just to give us a, be able to see the axes there. And then we'll say it goes to, um, let's try x max of 15. Then we use a scale of just one. The y minimum, uh, let's just do minus two so that we can see the x axis. And then we're going to change the y max. So after a couple of seconds, you know, after one second, it looks like it's already at like 40 something, 40 something meters, is it meters? It's in meters, yes, 40 something meters above the ground. So even after one second, it's pretty high. So let's uh, see if we can make this Y max and we'll try and go for, I don't know, we'll say 160. We'll see how that works out. Maybe we'll just do a, a scale of, um, 20 here see and let's graph that ah there we have it we have a better looking graph here we can see it does look like that parabola shape so that's very familiar to us as a quadratic function and we can see the maximum looks just about there and so I'm going to change my window though to so make it look at more at, in the middle of the screen so here I'll change my window setting make my y max a little bit higher 200 and then graph there and then I have uh, it looks a little bit closer to the middle of the screen. Now we're going to try and find this max 
value here by using our second trace. So let's try that. So second trace is our calculation menu. We have our calculation menu. Let's try, since we notice that it is a maximum, let's choose number four. We can also go down to number four or press number four. So there is. And now here you can see this says left boundary. So we're going to move our cursor to the left side of that max value. Press enter. Now it asks for a right boundary. So let's move over to the right side of that. And then press enter. And then it says, hey, can you guess the spot where it is? Well, let's move the cursor a little bit closer to where that maximum value is and press enter. And here we can see this maximum, it says it's 6.00000005. When you have that many zeros there, it's probably just the pixelation in, on the calculator. This is probably exactly six. And then the Y value, it says is 147. So let's use that um, in our calculation. So remember that number 147, but it also says in part B, what is the height of the projectile three seconds after launch? So let's again use our calculation. So second, then trace, and then here the value, the number one here, the value, we can put an X value in and then see what the Y value is. So I'm gonna press enter. It asks us, you know, X equals what? And so we're gonna put three in there and let's see what happens. When we put three in there, X equals three and Y here equals 111. Now we do need to keep in mind that if we are going to be putting in an X value, that X value has to show up on the screen because right now the calculator is only thinking about this part. Even though the function continues this way and continues that way, if you're trying to find a value, you want to be able to see that coordinate. Okay, it also says, you know, how many seconds after the launch is the maximum height reached? So I'm going to go through this again. We'll say second trace uh, down to maximum. The left boundary is over here on the left. The right boundary is, we can just go to the right side of the maximum value, move over and guess the maximum value. And we see again here the maximum value is 147. But we'll take a look at this. We have this x equals 5.9999999992 and here when you see that many nines here this is just could be the pixelation on the calculator that is most likely equaling exactly 6 now we might say what was the height of the projectile at the launch we could again just calculate the value here and if it was at launch it means that the x value was equal to 0 so let's press that and we get when x is equal to 0, y is equal to 3. Now the other one, the other question in F says determine the projectile when the projectile hit the ground to the nearest tenth of a second. Now when it hits the ground, it means that, remember h was the height in meters of the projectile. So when h is 0, that is the ground. So let's go through here and see if we can calculate that. We're going to press second, then trace. We're going to try and find the zero now because this is the the spot where the y is equal to zero so press zero the left boundary here is going to be over this way there's someone close there's a left boundary and the right we need to make it so that the y value is negative so here we found a negative, although we can't see the cursor here, we can see in the value here, this is negative. Now make the guess somewhere around there, press enter. And here it says that the zero happens at x equals 12.062178. And it says this, y equals 1e negative 11. What does that mean? Well, that means it's 1 times 10 to the exponent negative 11. So really we're saying there's 11, 0, 0.0, then 10 zeros, and then a 1. And so that, you know, I think again, we can 
um, attribute that to the pixelation on the, the calculator and say that really is equal to zero. So it looks like our zero happens at x equals 12 point, if we just round to the nearest tenth, it would be 12.1. Okay, so let's take a look at back at this. Okay, so let's answer these questions then. So sketch the relevant part of the parabola on the grid. So if we had this parabola here, this kind of goes like so. And here, this is three, but here, if we're the maximum height is going to be close to 150 here. So let's just say that we have 100 and oops, 50. Now this doesn't quite look accurate. This should be three, so maybe this should be a bit lower. But this is just a rough sketch. We're using our calculator to actually make a more accurate sketch. So here. So that's done, A is done. Let's try B, find the height of the projectile three seconds after launch. Remember, we used the value calculation on the calculator. We said that X was equal to three, and then we found that the H was equal to 111. And so we can say that at three seconds after launch, the height was 111 meters. We found the maximum height reached by the projectile. That is the maximum of this graph, or else, the, in other words, the vertex of this graph. And so here, th that happened at x is equal to 12.1, but the maximum height was equal to 147 meters. Wow, that is a projectile. Okay, how many seconds after launch is the maximum height reached? Well, oh sorry, this x was equal to 6. And here, remember, this is the coordinates of the vertex. So when the projectile was at 147 meters, then the x value was equal to 6. So that means it happened at 6 seconds. What was the height of the projectile at the launch? Well, when it's just at the launch, if we read the question correctly, it would say that the time t in seconds is after the launch, and that means that if the time is 0, that means it's right at the launch. So here, we can say that h of 0 is equal to 3. We used the calculation value of 0, the x value of 0, and we found that it happened at launch. It was at 3 meters. Determine when the projectile hit the ground to the nearest tenth of a second. We used the second trace, or the calculation, again. Um, and we chose the 0 option so that we could find the 0. So h of t, when, when was it equal to 0? When was the height equal to 0? Well, we found that zero using left bound, right bound, and a guess, and we found that it was it was at zero at 12.1 seconds. So we're able to answer these questions then about this application in real life. Uh, we should mention though, is that when it hits the ground. Whoops. So we found when the projectile hits the ground at 12.1 seconds, it, it hits the ground when the height is equal to zero meters. And we should keep in mind, you know, if we were to see this graph, this graph would continue going. So the graph itself is not, does not show the real life situation. We also have a graph part that goes this way as well. But for the sake of our problem, it really only starts on this, this point. And it's only and stops at that point. So although we have a graph that continues on, from that, you know, from that equation, it, it would continue on in the negative values and underneath here. This is the only section that applies to this particular situation, where you just launch it and then it hits the ground, and then might have a different behavior once it hits the ground. Another application of quadratic functions and equations is using it in a revenue sense, a profit and revenue uh, business might be trying to make some money and trying to find the, the most optimal way to make their money. Of course, in, in a case like this, where you're selling season tickets, you could probably have a really high price, but not very many people would buy it. You could also have it as a very, very low price, and you have lots and lots of people that buy those tickets, but it may not make you very much money. And so we're trying to find this optimal sense of, of where it is. So here we have a struggling hockey club had only 7,200 season ticket holders. The owner of the hockey club decided to raise the price of the package of season tickets for the new season to generate more revenue. 
the existing cost of the package of season tickets is currently 1400 Before raising the price, of course, he hired a market research company to gather data on the proposed increase, you know, to poll some people to see whether or not they would continue with their uh, season tickets if the price raised. So the research company reported that for every $25 increase in price, approximately 100 season ticket holders would not renew their season tickets. So even, you know, in this sense, we have 7,200 season ticket holders, and we can assume that for now, if it was the same price, then you'd have the 7,200 season ticket holders. But if you raise this price from 1400 to 1425 you would lose 100 of these season ticket holders. There would only be 7,100 season ticket holders. So if the price increase is to be a multiple of $25, then let's try and use this following procedure to determine what price would maximize the revenue. So let X be the number of $25 increases from the current price of the season ticket. So if the price was $14.25, the X value would be one. It's one $25 increase. If it was $14.50, X would be two because it's a two times $25 increase. So let's write expressions in X for the cost of the package and then the potential number of season ticket holders. So if we talk about the cost, the cost is currently right now it is $1,400, but with increases, and remember we're going only up by $25 at a time, so it's 25 in $25 increments. Uh, so we can use this X here to say, you know, $1,425 is one $25 increase. X being two is a double $25 increase, which would make it $1,450. Now here and then, we can talk about the number of season ticket holders. The number of ticket holders and right now it's 7,200 season ticket holders. And if it stayed at the current price, then that then you would keep this number. But remember, for every time this $25 goes up, you know, for every step in X, you're actually going to lose 100 of those people. So if X was 1, you would lose 100 people. If X was 2, then you would lose 200 people. And so you can start to see this relationship here between the cost and the number of ticket holders. Now when we take a look at this, we can say right about here that this is 8 and it looks something something like that. Well, let's see if we can take a look then and um, use these results to generate an expression that represents the revenue obtained. So if we're talking about revenue then, revenue is how much money we're going to bring in. Now how, how do we gain revenue? Well, season ticket holders will purchase the season tickets. Right now, the current revenue, if we're talking about current, the current revenue is going to be would be your fourteen hundred dollars times how many season ticket holders you have. So you have the price times the number you have. So let's say it's the price of each ticket times the number of tickets that you have. Okay, we have expressions for this, right? Remember the price was $1,400, but we were considering moving it up by increments of 25. So here, this actually is, the price is 1400 currently, but we're thinking about moving it up in increments of 25. So we have this 1400 plus 25X. Then the number of ticket holders is going to be, well, it could be 7200 currently, but we lose 100 season ticket holders for each increment of an increase in price. So here we have this and now we can multiply this through and get an equation here. So this ends up being 1400 times 7200 looks like we got so what do we have here? We have three, we have about 10 million dollars here and then we have plus 40,000 40, X and then minus 2500x squared. 
So can you notice a quadratic equation happen here? Is a quadratic equation. It kind of looks like it's it's backwards a little bit, but you have this negative a coefficient of x squared here. But here let's determine the price of the package of season tickets that would generate the maximum revenue. We need to interpret this a little bit, right? If this is a maximum revenue, would we have a maximum? Well, if we take a look and think about this graph, remember this is like an ax squared, right? If you remember from our transformations, talk about transformations, if a is negative, the parabola is gonna be pointed down. If the parabola is pointed down, then you would have either, what would you have between a minimum or maximum value? It would be a maximum value. And so we're gonna try and find that maximum value. When you see this keyword, this maximum value, it may indicate that you are looking for the vertex. But we can also find a maximum at any time using our graphing calculator. So let's make y1 then equal to our negative 2500x squared plus 40,000x plus our 10 million 80,000. Now we're going to determine the, you, once we graph that, once we graph it, then we're going to find our maximum point. So we're going to find our maximum point. How do we do that? Well, let's take a look. I'm going to pause the video and we're just going to look at the graph and calculator here. Okay, I have my graph and calculator on now. We're going to look at y1 and we're going to graph this. So I have my graph and calculator here. I'm going to try and find this maximum value here. And so I'm going to go to my y1. There it is. And uh, let's plug in this function. So 1, 0, 0, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, plus 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 40,000 x minus 2500 x squared. Okay, so let's try and graph that and see what happens here. We have, oh, we're able to see something. Well, um, we might not have seen that. We might have said, you know, we might have saw something like this. Nothing shows up here. And then we think, well, how can we make this window so that this works? Now remember that we're talking about $10 million uh, here. So we need to make sure that our window is really high. So here, we might try, you know, um, x incre increments if we lost, say, um, 2,000 ticket holders, so 20. Uh, the y minimum, we might say, is... Uh, zero we might say the y max we're talking about 10 million dollars is one two and we again we still see nothing so let's try this we're going to press zoom here zoom and then we're going to move down to find the zoom fit option so there's the zoom fit when we press that we should be able to see some of the graph so when we see some of the graph then we can adjust it a little bit so here we can see this quadratic familiar quadratic form here. Let's look at our window and see where it is. Well, we were looking at this value here. The Y max was at 10,209,000 or something like that. So let's just make this a little bit higher so that we can see this a little bit better. So um, if we made this maybe three, we'll try that. And ah, this looks a little bit better. And now we can calculate the maximum on this screen. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to press second trace. We're going to look at the maximum for the, the calculator now asks us for a left boundary. So we need to go over here somewhere. So we're going to move this over here. Press enter. Then it asks us, please put a right boundary. So we need like a right goal post here so that the maximum is in the middle. So I'm going to move this over this way and press enter. And then it says, hey, can you guess the spot? Well, I'm going to try and guess the spot. Maybe it's right about there. And press enter. And we find here the maximum happens at 8.00000096, something like that. When we have this many zeros here, we can assume then that's probably just the pixels on the calculator. Also, we have this maximum value here, and that is the maximum. Let's take a look then and uh, see if we can find 
find out our answers. Let's keep that in mind there. We'll need that for a little bit later because remember, we tried to optimize it. This is the maximum uh, X we should use and this is going to be the maximum. Now remember, this whole quadratic function was a function or a description of revenue. So this is going to be our revenue, maximum revenue when X is equal to eight. Okay, getting back to our question then, we want to find the X point where we found the maximum. We found that X value to be eight. Now, it was very, very close, 8.00000, which meant eight, but if we had a, a decimal here, we would probably have to round to the nearest one because remember X was in increments of 25, right? It was a $25 increase or a $50 increase. So X was one or two or so on. So X was equal to eight here. If that is the, the correct X, then we're going to adjust the price to say then now it's 1400 and we're going to increase it by eight increments of $25. When we get that, we would get $1,600 as our new price. That'd be our new price. Then how many season ticket holders would there be if this plan was implemented? Remember that we were talking about X equals eight. Eight was the number of $25 increases or increments of 25. And remember our number expression was equal to 7,200 to start off with, but we would lose 100 ticket holders for every increase in price. So we lost eight times 100 season ticket holders. So now we only have 6,400 season ticket holders, but they're paying, you know, a whole bunch of money more. So there's $200 more. How much more revenue would be generated if the plan in C was implemented? So if we did actually made this new price, we increased it by $25 eight times, which meant we lost 800 season ticket holders, but with a higher $200 more price, uh, that is our maximum um, revenue. So we had our original one, Original revenue is what? Our original revenue was equal to the original the original price times the original number of season ticket holders. So we have original price of fourteen hundred and original number of people is seventy two hundred. Well that's equal to ten zero eight zero one, two, three. So ten million eighty thousand dollars. All right. Now, if we're talking about new revenue, then the new revenue is the new price times the new number. We are talking about a new price of sixteen hundred dollars, and that's multiplied by a new number of people is sixty four hundred people, which ends up being our ten. Two, four, zero, one, two, three, which we have found as the y value in when we calculate the maximum in the graph. So the increase then is going to be the difference between this and this. And the increase is equal to ten million two hundred and forty thousand minus ten million eighty thousand. So we're looking at a hundred and sixty thousand dollars in increased revenue. Alright, so you're ready for your assignment and I will see you in class.